number 16, assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with the solution containing a common ion. Show that the changes in the initial concentrations of the common ions can be neglected. Okay, so then we have lead 2 iodide, which is PBI2 solid, and this is in a solution of 0.0355 molarity of calcium iodide, CaI2. Now this question would not be able to get done unless we knew the solubility product of the solid, the KSP. And it's always going to be of the solid. So in this case, I went to the back of the book to find out what the KSP value of PBI2 was. It's 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8. So with this KSP, I'm going to have to write a balanced equation for just the solid, right? That's being dissolved under dissolution. So let's do that first. PB... I2, this is a solid, this is at equilibrium because we're talking about K values, and what are the two ions that it's going to break down into? Well, the break has to be between the lead and the iodine. So we have PB plus I. But what are the charges in the upper right-hand corner? Because they're ions, right? You could just use your rules of gen chem all the way in the beginning to do the crisscross method. There was one lead and two iodine. So this one crisscrosses up telling you that the I was a negative one. And this two crisscrosses up telling you that the lead was a plus two. So we have that going on. Plus two for the lead and minus one for the iodine. Now since they're charges, I'm going to write that they're aqueous. Every time that you have a charge, it's always aqueous. And then we just have to balance one lead, one lead, two iodines. So I have to put a two in front of the I. Okay, next step activated is we're going to take the balanced equation and write the general KSP. So the J general KSP formula is this. It's just equal to the products divided by the coefficients. No reactants allowed because a reactant is a solid. So KSP, whoop, KSP, whoop, <laughs> let's try that again. K, oh boy, hold on, KSP, that looks good to me, uh, equal to PB, 2 plus, times the concentration of the I minus. But remember, keep in mind that you do have to raise these to the coefficients. So there was nothing in front of the PB that meant that that was just a 1, which means that you raise it to the first power, but nobody cares, right? But in this case, the I is, there's a 2 in front of there. That's the coefficient. So I have to take the I concentration and square it. Now we plug in our values that we know. The KSP is the 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth, but we don't know what these concentrations are. So that's where we start making up variables. But this is where you have to say, did you start off with any other value? Yes, I did. I have 0 0.0355 molarity of CAI2. If you're starting off with another compound, this is going to be a common ion problem. And just know that is calcium iodide, is that solid, soluble or insoluble, right? Is that aqueous or a solid? Well, remember... According to our sol solubility rules, iodine can be soluble, but can be insoluble depending on what the compound in front of it is. But since calcium is not one of those exceptions, calcium iodide is going to be aqueous. So if we're starting off with an aqueous compound, CaI2, that means that it's going to just dissolve into its two ions. And in this case, that's the calcium and the iodine, right? Calcium, always in uh, group two, so that's a plus two charge. Iodine, minus one. You could also just do your crisscrossing again. Um, these are aqueous. Just make sure that you are balancing the equation. So I have one calcium, one calcium, and I have two iodine, so I have to put that two in front of there. And now they told us that calcium iodine was 0 0.0355 molarity. 
Now, all we have to do for this part is just look at our uh, mole ratios, right? The coefficients. It's a one to one to two ratio. But now which ion do I care about? Which one is the common one? Meaning which one is the same for both equations? Yeah, it's the I minus. So in essence, I don't even care about this ion. I only care about this one. Only do the work that you have to do. Don't do more work than you have to, right? And now how am I going to convert this into here? Well, you just use your ratios. If it's a one to two, that means that this number has to be twice as much. So I'm gonna do two times 0 0.0355 to get my I minus concentration. Two times 0 0.0355 is 0. Point, maybe I'll just put that as an equal sign. 0. Point, what is it? 0 0.071. Technically for sig figs, it should have a zero at the end. Does anybody care? No. <laughs> that's the molarity of the I minus. Now remember, that's what your compound is in. So if you're starting with 0. 0.0710 molarity, and that's your initial concentration. Remember, anytime that we say the word initial, we have to write a ice table. So here we go. Ice it up. I-C-E. What is going on? I-C-E. Down. Cross. We've done these so many times, right? For the purposes of this answer, remember, solids don't go for our ice table, so you could kind of get rid of that. And this value is now the initial the initial for the I minus. So that's where that number comes in, 0 0.0710. You didn't start off with any lead, so that's zero. And now change, that's where your plus X's or minus X's are. You can only go up from zero, so that would have to be a plus X. Remember, that's a one X, you just put in the coefficient in the front. And this would be plus two X, because I have two of them. Your equilibrium line is just the combination of your I and C. So 0 plus X is X. This one is 0 0.0710 plus 2X. And now these are the numbers that you plug into your equilibrium values. So PB is X. This is 0 0.0710 plus 2X. However, if we keep this plus 2X in there, that change from the initial, then we're gonna have to do the quadratic. And we don't wanna do that at all cost. So what we're gonna do is we're going to basically show that that change can be neglected. And how we do that is we do the 5% rule. We're going to eliminate this plus X because we're gonna say that this starting number is so much larger than the change that at the end of the day, if this is such a small number, this is going to be the predominant number at the end, mainly because the KSP is such a small value. Let's now solve, and then we'll do the 5% rule. 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth equals, we have X, 0 0.0710, and then that's squared, right? Okay, so 0 0.0710 squared is, if I maybe just get rid of this, right, this is the same as 0 0.005041, divide on both sides by that number, 0 0.005041, 0 0.005041, 0 0.005041, 0 .005041. this gets rid of that, and now we have x equals 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8 divided by that number. 2.78 times 10 to the negative 6. And these are concentrations, so that's molarity. Now let's just see if we can make that assumption. That's the 5% rule. What you're going to do is you're going to take your x value and you're going to divide it by your initial so 0 0.0710, and then times it by 100 because I need a percent. If this number is 5 or less, 
Then we assumed correctly and we don't have to do the quadratic. But if it's five or more, that means I had to go back, add the two X in there, do the math and do the quadratic. So when I just do this, 2.78 times 10 to the negative six divided by 0 0.0710 times 100, yeah, I don't even get 1%. So this passes the 5% rule by a lot. So maybe I'll just do a check. And now this is the X value that goes in your equilibrium. So if I can, we basically have our answers. We just wanted to find out those concentrations. Why do I keep writing AG? Ah, <laughs> oh, man, that's okay. At least I catch my mistakes, right? That's all that matters. Okay, so PB2 plus was X, and X was 2.78 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. And then the I minus was 0 0.0710 plus 2X. When you do the math, you still incorporate that X here, even though we, you know, uh, assume that we didn't have to use it for the math. So just plug in that X value and solve. So 0 0.0710 plus 2 times 2.78 times 10 to the negative 6. And did it even change? No, it didn't. <laughs> so as you can see, we did assume correctly that that X value wasn't going to do anything as far as change the I minus concentration. And those are your two answers. Whoop, whoop, okay. So thank you so much for uh, viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. I really hope that these videos are giving you great educational content and that you're learning from these videos. Go check the channel out. Um, we also have physics and math videos at the moment. We've got like four, almost 4,000 videos. That's nuts. And uh, we're almost at 20,000 subscribers. So if you wouldn't mind pressing the subscribe button and telling your friends, get the word out there, I would appreciate that very, very, very much. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.